Hey guys, it's the Chad, your C10 truck nerd. Today, I've got something pretty special for you guys. Check out this 1972 Chevy C10 short bed. Now this 72 has got to be one of the most tricked out C10s in the Midwest. Well, in today's video, we're going to go through and talk to my buddy Mike, who owns this truck. He's going to give us a full walk around. And if you guys stick around to the end, we're going to tell you how this sweet 72 can be all yours. Well, it's my honor and pleasure to go through and introduce my friend, Mr. Mike Castillo. Mike, welcome to the channel. Thanks, Chad. You know, thanks for having us out here and showing us your truck. I know you're a super busy guy right wow. now. Yeah, a little bit going on. <laughs> well, Mike, he's got to be one of the most knowledgeable 67 to 72 truck guys in the Midwest. Anytime I've had any questions, which has been a bunch since I've started this channel, or if I needed any used parts, everybody's always told me to go to Mike. Well, recently, a lot of people have been calling me the C10 truck nerd, and that's pretty cool. But Mike, he's most definitely earned the reputation of being the 67 to 72 truck guy. That's because of all of his knowledge about these trucks. He's always willing to help us out and check out the quality of stuff that he has. Now, Mike and I were joking a couple months back that I said, man, I wish I knew half as much about these trucks as you've already forgotten, and that's the truth. So without further ado, Mr. Mike Castillo. Hey. Mike, so what is it about the 72s that drew you in, 67 to 72s? So initially I had built a 57 Chevy truck and powder coated the frame. I wanted to do one really nice. And I started getting into it and I just, as I was looking for parts, I started seeing a lot of these trucks. Well, I've got this part, well, I've got that part. Well, then I started thinking, man, it may be just easier to do one of those. So I sold all that off and that's kind of what started it. And so then I started looking I found a, uh, six, a 27,000 mile 72 GMC and uh, I did it up and then I ended up selling that and then just after that it went bonkers. <laughs> I know you've built a lot of these, you said, you know, and restored. How many do you think you've done in your I've probably years of this? done four or five myself. Um, I started probably eight or ten and then sold them off before I did any more with them. And then I've parted about a hundred and the first couple years I started parting and then about 50 the following year. And then I got a job out of town and so then I had to stop. Okay, well, I've been kind of following your lead a little bit. I've recently been trying to buy and sell a lot of parts, you know, flip a lot of stuff, trying to build a little nest egg. I even just went through and parted out a 69 C10. Yeah. That way I can hopefully build my trucks without using a whole lot of money. And that's yeah. kind of been your business model, hasn't it? Right, so this truck, buying the initial truck, doing everything to it, all the parts, the breakdowns, the trailers that you end up buying, tires, brakes, all of that is all bought from parts that I've sold. So, you know, a fender here, two fenders here, a core support, you know, they start adding up. So when you, when you get that many trucks and that many parts, you can start building the nest egg, right? Well, that's true. So you guys could start out driving junk like I do and end up one day having some quality <laughs> stuff like this here. So we'll do a quick walk around in just a second. So your truck is a 1972, right? Yes. So did it start as a custom, custom deluxe Cheyenne? What is it? So this was a Cheyenne and you can tell by the rear light on the back of the hat of the cab. So it was a 72 Cheyenne uh, C10. Was it original short bed or uh, cut down? This is a cut down. It's over 20 years ago that this truck was built. Oh wow. So when you start looking at it, you know, they say it flexes, it does all these things. If you do them right, no they're worries. just as good. No, it, it, looks, it looks really good. So everybody's gonna ask the question, it's a 72 with a 68 front clip, right? Yes. Correct. So why the, why the front clip swap? So I like the look of the, the front clip of the 68. Um, it's just a personal preference, really. It's not a it's not a huge uh, effort if you wanted to go into that. It's not a huge effort to switch these over. Um, it's basically just finding the right the right parts or buying the right parts and then deciding that you're going to make the swap. Just to let you guys know, Mike and I are going to do another video coming up soon where we're going to talk about all the parts that you need for a front clip swap. A lot of people want to know how do you take the front end from a 67 and 68 to put it on a 7172. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel 
hit the notification bell. That way you guys don't miss out on that cool content. So tell me about your paint on this truck. So this paint was painted in 2000 and about two years ago we decided to freshen it up a little bit. So we wet sanded it with 2000, then wet sanded it with 3000, then they cut and buffed it and that got it really shining like it should be again. And then we went and uh, I had it ceramic coated. Okay. So, so I know you use a company out of Andover called Dave's Detail. Yeah, Dave, Dave did all the work on it. Um, definitely put in a lot of hours, him and his team. And, uh, and I think it, it shows pretty well for a 20 year old paint job. I mean, it looks phenomenal. I and mean, black's pretty unforgiving. And, it is. and this thing is looking really great on that. So I also noticed that you've got the 67, 68 lower trim on here. So a lot of right. people from the outside would have no idea this is right. a 72 because right. it pretty much looks like an original 68 from this right. end of it there. So what wheels and tires do you got? So these wheels are the original 15 by eights that you could find on some trucks uh, that were ordered that way. So these are 15 by eights with the hubcap nubs and I've got 68 hubcaps that I sourced. Okay. And then I had them powder coated and then hand pinstriped. And, uh, and then those are stainless rims that I had, or stainless steel trim rings that I had powder coated black. All right. And so, so the, the fronts are 15 by eight and the backs are 15 by 10. So they cut the hoop off. Okay. And then you can order a, a, 10, a 10 inch wide hoop and then you get them welded on and that makes the, it makes you accept a wider tire. That's a 295 on the back okay, and a 255 on the front. So that's, yeah, that's a lot of meat stuffed under there. Well, tell us about the bed on this truck. I know there's a couple special items right. about this one than most of them out there. So this bed, uh, aside from having the widened uh, inner wheel tubs, it's actually a fiberglass bedside. So these fiberglass bedsides were only made by the company for a couple years, okay. uh, right around nine, uh, 99 to 2000. And so that's when these bedsides were sourced and, uh, and put together. And so they're actually fiberglass. They're about almost three eighths of an inch thick. Ooh. Well, so, you never got to worry about it rusting. So that's, that's uh, right. I won't have any wheel well rust for sure. <laughs> I see you got the gas tank down below the bed. You got the bed line. It does. It has a Boyd's gas tank and, uh, a bed liner that was sprayed in. Um, I guess the company's called Speed Liner. Okay. Tell me about the, the back. You got a wing back here too. So the so. wing is from Venata Fabrication. Okay. Um, I just marked it, put the holes, drilled the holes for it, and then I put nut zerts in there so it would stay firm. So you can really torque it down so it doesn't fall off. And then it's got the supports that go across the back. Um, if anybody's thinking of doing that, I would make sure that you tape off where you're going to put your little <laughs> sticky things because they'll end up coming off because the ceramic coating won't let, won't allow it to stick. Oh so. yeah, that's a that's a good tip you guys probably need to pay attention to there. Learn from experience. So what's the suspension you have under this? So this one has a because it's 15 inch tires and they don't have a lot of sidewall. I couldn't go with a full 57 drop, so okay. it's got a four inch four and a half inch drop in the front. So two and a half inch spindles, two inch springs. And then the back's got a um, five inch spring with a one inch uh, block. So it's C-notched then. It's, so it's C-notched. Um, that's from CPP, everything's from CPP. And uh, I've had really good luck with it. Yeah, it's good, sure. good, good quality stuff. Sometimes you can buy stuff on eBay and Amazon, but sometimes you get that quality with it yeah. as well. So what do you have for a powertrain? So this is a, the same thing because the truck was done 20 years ago. This is a Chevy 502 crate motor. So that was the big boy back then. That was then. the big kid back then, yeah. Five, 455 or so horsepower. Um, it's got a 700 R4 oh, transmission, good. a monster transmission. And then, of course, everything to make all of that work right. Um, dual overflow tanks, one overflow for the radiator and one for, I use the same one to use for the windshield washer fluid, okay. just so yep. it matches. It's got an aluminum radiator, four core, with dual electric fans. Um, that drives the vintage air. Yep. Um, so it's got sniper, electronic fuel injection, vintage air, Dakota digital uh, gauges. Oh wow. Um, so so truly control. there is a lot of 
technology under yeah, here. I mean, it's it, as technology up as you could go for the most part. Without doing an LS. Without doing an LS, LS swap. Which, so. which is cool because I like the looks, the originality of this truck right. too. But it is really tricked out, like I told you guys. A lot of stuff that's real subtle in this truck, but a lot of money. This is a, a lot of a lot of time and effort into this. It's truck also got here. dual batteries. Oh yeah, it does. And the it? LED headlights. I guess while we're on the front. But yeah. Then the driving lights come on with the brights, kind of like most most other cars. So. So let's check out the interior. I know this is something really special here. Yeah, so it's got, uh, these are original door handles, of course. Um, the seats are original buddy bucket seats. And then I had the upholsterer mimic the exact spacing and lines of all the original uh, markings on the panel. So this is exactly what the seat would look like if you had a set of buddy buckets right now in your truck from the factory, except we upgraded instead of using heat seams because that's hard to do nowadays. Instead of using heat seams, they just use stitching. And okay. then they did the new style stitching for like the newer cars have, just to make it look a little classier. So. But you did keep, I see you kept the original 72 door, I mean the door panels yeah. there. Yeah, so it does have the 72 door panels. And most of that reason was because 72 has a longer uh, door handle mechanism and it so would've, it would have stuck out too far it would have stuck out and looked kind of silly i mean we could switch them over but these are original and they work really well um it also has power windows and door locks which a lot of people don't don't really have anymore it's not a big deal but it is a convenience feature yeah, and i saw you since you did shave the gas tank you got stereo back here too. right so the stereo box currently is out because i'm redoing it but it has two jl 13 w5s um, the new thin three and a half inch thick subwoofer from JL. It's got a JL 1400 watt amp. Um, it's got all one gauge power wire coming back to the amplifier. It's got an I did it uh, chrome steering column. Something you don't see every day probably or have not ever maybe seen is these knobs are re were reproduced in billet aluminum. Oh so they're gosh. exact replicas, <laughs> wow. uh, but they're made out of billet. And then most dashes don't have an auxiliary throttle and a choke, yep. but I have the holes in this one because I use the, the extra knob I have, I use for the JL subwoofer base control. Outstanding. So just something a little bit special, you know? And the same thing with the, with the uh, headliner, it's also been redone in the leather to match, which is something you just don't see right now, but. Cruise control? Does have cruise and tilt. Um, obviously factory tack and then everything is adjustable all the colors all the uh, it's got a low car shifter so it shifts in and out of gear like a brand new car it's really a, a nice drive for sure so now we've got pretty much a full walk around of Mike 72 well, let us know down in the clickety clack what's your favorite part of this truck mine I think it's got to be that red interior I mean it is just killer so like I told you guys at the beginning of the video Mike is going to be putting this truck up for sale. Yes, sir. So if you guys would be interested in this 72, there's a couple different ways. Down in the description below, I'm going to be putting Mike's Facebook and Instagram uh, links there. If you guys aren't part of the 67to72chevy.com forum, you might check that out. Just tons of good information out there. Mike's on there as well. What's your name on that? Cash3481. 3481 on that. So if you check out any of those sites and the truck's still listed, it's still for sale, but I couldn't assume that it's gonna last for very long. Well, again, I wanna give a big shout out to Mike and to all you guys out there that are turning wrenches, keeping these old 67 to 72s alive. You know, I know most of us do this not for their recognition, but I really enjoy going through and highlighting trucks like this and all the owners out there. So if you guys haven't, make sure you hit that like button Please subscribe to the channel and check out my other 67 to 72 videos, especially the one where Mike and I are going to go through and tell you how to do that front clip swap. Well, we appreciate your time and thanks for watching.